In today's video, I'm sharing with you how you can get the most benefit out of your 401k. Now, I'm a 401k advisor, and in that role, one of my primary responsibilities is to provide education, meet one-on-one -on -one with the employees of the plans that I work with. And so in that role, I see the same mistakes and missed opportunities over and over and over again. And so in today's video, I want to talk about five really important things that you need to know about your 401k plan so that you can fully maximize the benefit. I talk a lot on my podcast, links below by the way, but I talk a lot in my podcast about 401ks, investing, etc. So this is not going to be about investing. I want to just focus on the features of most 401k plans that are really important for you to know. By the way, um, this is Lucy back here. She's sunning herself on the back of my couch right now. The first missed opportunity that I see is, is someone who thinks that they're maxing out, but they're not maxing out. And uh, I know this every time because I'll look at what their contribution is and it, I'll see like a flat dollar amount and it'll be $16,500. And I said, hmm, interesting. Okay, yeah, you were maxing out 10 years ago in 2011, but a lot of people who contribute a flat dollar amount and who intend to max out or maybe at one point were maxing out, they fail to make the adjustment in subsequent years. So every couple of years, the 401k maximum allowable contribution increases. I'm recording this video in 2021, and this year it's $19,500 that you can contribute to your from your own paycheck into your 401k plan and an additional $6,500 on top of that if you're over 50. The second missed opportunity that I see is Roth 401ks and not taking advantage of those. So most plans today, I think it's like 70 or 80% of 401k plans have a Roth feature that allows you to contribute to the uh, Roth 401k in your plan. So I just mentioned those contribution limits, the $19,500 and the $6,500 on top of that. You could put every penny of that contribution into the Roth bucket within your 401k plan. Now you don't have to put all of it, but you, you can put you know anything from a dollar to like $26,000 into the for Roth 401k for that. That year. Here's the thing with Roth. A lot of people, especially those of you who are watching this video, you're closer to retirement, you dismiss the Roth. I'm a huge proponent of the Roth. I think it's an amazing opportunity. Most people have far too less money in Roth. Nice thing about the Roth 401k is that it doesn't matter what your income is. You're locked out of a Roth IRA contribution if your income is too high. There's no income limit to be able to contribute to a Roth 401k. Here's why I love the Roth so much. Tax-free growth and tax-free withdrawals. You also aren't gonna be forced to take withdrawals at age 72 like you are with a traditional IRA or traditional 401k account. So keep that in mind. There's so many benefits to the Roth. Do not dismiss it. If you don't wanna go all in on the Roth, fine, but you should at least contribute some of your contributions to a Roth because we just don't know what future tax rates are. Tax rates looks like, it looks like taxes are going up right now. And, and like in the few years, maybe when you're retired, taxes will be higher. Taxes are very low right now by historical norms. So it makes sense that you would want to kind of hedge your bets a little bit and have money in, in an account that's not going to be taxed later. The third missed opportunity that I see in people not taking advantage fully of the 401k is in the match that your employer makes. So your employer likely provides a matching contribution. Um, the most common one is like a two-tiered match where you get 100% on the first 3% of your contribution from your pay, and then you get a 50% match on the next 2% of your contributions from your pay. So in essence, with that match formula, the match caps out at 5%. So you have to contribute at least 5% from your own paycheck in order to get that full matching contribution. If you contribute only 2% or 3%, you're not maximizing the match. You're going to leave money on the table, and that's not good. 
One of the other features that I see people n almost never take advantage of is your ability to consolidate old accounts. So most 401k plans, if you look into the rules of, the, of that particular 401k, they allow for um, rollovers into the plans. It's not just 401k accounts. If you have an old IRA, if you have an old simple IRA, you can consolidate accounts and generally as long as it's a, an account where the tax treatment is the same, so simple IRAs for tax purposes are really the same as 401ks or traditional IRAs in how they're taxed. And so for that reason, you can consolidate those assets into your current 401k. This is a great option if you just want to simplify your life, um, simplify your finances, get all those old accounts that are just kind of hanging out there, clean those up and consolidate them into your plan. My only word of caution with doing this is you want to make sure that the, the, the plan that you're consolidating into, that the uh, fees are reasonable and you have good investment options to choose from. So we don't want to consolidate into a garbage 401k plan. Um, which brings me to the next point, which is if you do have a garbage 401k plan, like the, the investments are terrible, the fees are really high, if you are um, employed in a really large plan, like there's thousands of, of people in your company investing in the 401k plan, then the chances that that 401k is gonna have low fees and decent investments is a lot higher. However, if you work for a smaller employer, you know, maybe you're one of 10 people or 30 people or 100 people, a lot more often I see really high fees, really terrible, low, poor performing investments. And in those cases, if you're close to retirement, you may consider a what's called an in-service distribution, an in-service rollover. This is also called an in-service withdrawal. So what it allows you to do is once you reach a certain age, you can take your money out of the plan. You're not gonna be taxed on it, you're not gonna be penalized. You just, it's almost as if you changed jobs and now you're gonna roll over your money, say, into an IRA. Um, and the beauty of this is that you can still contribute to your 401k, you're still working there, you can still make those contributions, but whatever that current balance is, let's say you have half a million dollars in your 401k at work, and you don't like how it's invested, you want more control over it, the fees are high, whatever the reason is, you take that money and you can do an in-service rollover to outside to an IRA. Again, no taxes, no penalties for doing that. So it's, a, it's an amazing option. Um, and allows you to get out of a bad 401k. Um, typically, in-service distributions, they usually start at age 59 and a half. A lot of times I see them older than that. So look into your plan, see if your plan allows for in-service distributions, most do. See what that age requirement is that you have to be older than a specified age in order to do that in-service rollover. Um, but it's a great option depending on uh, what your reasons are for wanting to move money out of the plan. All right, so if you got some value from this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you like this content, if you're getting close to retirement, if you want help just on your path to retirement, I, I have a daily podcast. It's called the One Minute Retirement Tip. Super quick, short tips to help you on your path to retirement. So all the links to subscribe and listen to that wherever you listen to podcasts are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. My name is Ashley Michike, and I hope you have a blessed day.